let's start from the top. So this is my mom, Nelly Alvarado. Yeah. Y dice en español. Bienvenido a encontrar lo gracioso con Lisa Alvarado. You nailed it. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Una vez más. Yay, yay. <laughs> That's my mom getting the chancla out. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Find the Funny. It's 2024. We did it. We survived Yay. 23. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. 23 was a piece of shit. Anybody yeah. else? Wow, was that a hard year. Yeah. I am so happy to be starting the podcast. This is a new year. Great things are going to happen for you and me. Um, you're going to subscribe. That's going to be one of the things that's going to happen. That's huge for you and for me. And then this is what we're going to do. I'm going to actually start to monetize on YouTube, you guys. And you know what would help me is if you listen to hours of my shit. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Listen. It's a goal. They're funny. Yeah. They're actually pretty decent. I don't know. I was actually ready for 23 to be done. <laughs> I think that's one of my my uh, New Year's resolutions is actually to be more positive and optimistic in 24. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, I actually looked up some very interesting stats because I don't always make New Year's resolutions. And this is why. So these are some stats that I got from Forbes um, about 2024. On average, people last with their New Year's resolutions less than four months, which I actually thought four months was a lot. A long time. Right? That's I was exactly like, what? Like it's more like four weeks, buddy. <laughs> what? Are you exactly. serious right now? Okay, Dude. so here's the breakdown. About 8% <laughs> stick to their goals through the first month. 22% um, of people stick to their goals and resolutions through two months, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's what, uh, that's 30%. 22% uh, last until three months. So that's pretty impressive. And 85% of men only last four minutes. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> First dick joke for the year. Thank you. I did it. We did it, you guys. It was it was a, it was a concerted effort between you and I. You were expecting one. I was ready to give one. So and I was ready to laugh. Yeah, and Sarah's ready to laugh. So this is teamwork. This is good. This is the first joke of my podcast of 2024. Yay! And it's a, it's a hacky joke. <laughs> so I also have a goal of definitely more original material, more original dick jokes this year, guys. Um, so here's another stat. 44% of Americans make resolutions on New Year's Eve, like right before <laughs> New Year's, which Just is so funny New because like that's what you should be planning it out and really thinking about it. And yeah. so it's the like five, four, three, two. I'm not going to shit my pants this year. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> You know, like what kind of a how serious are you about this goal? If that's how long you're waiting to actually literally on New Year's Eve before the ball drops, people start to really think like minutes before are going. <laughs> that's what my goal is this year. So that I thought was fabulous. I didn't know that fact. Um, 81 percent of people fail by February. So oh, I'm wow. probably in that percentage. Mm -hmm. So here's the most popular goals, um, New Year's resolutions, and you probably guessed them. In fact, we probably have both, all of us have at one point or another wished for these things or okay. wanted these things. Number one, exercise more. That's why gyms, you know, yeah. their memberships are unbelievable. Right. And I'm actually leaving my gym in January. <laughs> That's my goal is to stop to, paying these astronomical prices yeah. when I'm never home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one is exercise. Number two is eat healthier. Number three is lose weight. Number four is save money. The first three have everything to do with looks, oh. with, with um, you know, appearance, I guess how you physically feel about yourself, how you mentally feel about yourself, 
Um, so that I think was really interesting because yeah. to me, exercising, losing weight, eating healthier, those are all one. Like that's kind of one common. I was just, yeah. Because I don't think you can do, I mean, I guess you can exercise and, and still eat shitty. I do that a lot. <laughs> That's like, but I try to, I limit my eating crappy right. food, you know? Right. right. Like I have it on some days and then I, I don't on other days and I eat really good. So saving money. Um, Yeah, I can see that for sure. Let's see. Okay. And then I, um, on another source, the most popular 2024 New Year's resolutions are these. Number one was save money. Number two is exercise more. Three is eat healthier. 40% of people, which is number four, spend more time with family and friends. Really? Wow. I was surprised about that one. That's cool. Um, the next one is lose weight. That is 35% of Americans. 26% of Americans want to reduce spending on living expenses. Huh? Like food, energy. <laughs> what? Yeah. How are you what, living expense? I, like, I think excessive spending or something. Right. That's weird. Um, 19% of people want to spend less time on social media. And the same 19% fail within the first hour, I would say, <laughs> getting yeah. on a uh, TikTok or and they're yeah. probably posting that on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, like today I'm gonna Yeah. <laughs> today I'm gonna not do TikTok. Send. <laughs> um and the last one, which is also 19%, is to reduce stress on the job. I mean, if you guys would just subscribe, right? That would reduce my stress on the job. I mean, <laughs> I would really appreciate that. <laughs> so, I found this article on CBS News. 6 out of 10 Americans believe money can buy happiness. And it's not just women, okay, guys? <laughs> it's according to a new financial poll from Empower. The median household in America earns Let's see. About, wow, 74000 annually. Is that wow. together? Because that's <laughs> not very good. <laughs> this led me to try and think about or figure out what, what do I want from my life in 2024? I think my resolutions, the big ones career-wise, would be to sell the special that I shot earlier in 2023. It's almost done being edited. I'm really excited about it. And I think it's a fresh look at what I'm doing now. So that would be great. I also have a documentary that I would like to sell this year. So career-wise, those are the two things that I'm not um, going to wait to put out. So if they don't sell, that's okay. I'm going to put them out on social media, YouTube or whatever. I think they're good enough to get some views and just get people to see what I'm about. On more personal note, I think I definitely want to focus more on giving than receiving mm. because that will help me manage expectations. I was thinking about this. Could you imagine if we all just focused on what we're giving to other people? instead of what we're receiving. Mm. I mean, that's that's such a crazy concept. I think that that would take care of a lot of things like judgment, mm. you know, mm -hmm. like when someone does something that say you don't like and it's it's so much easier to focus on someone else's behavior or decisions or what they're doing in their life and point it out instead of going well, what do I do that's wrong? Or what do I do that's bad? Or that's a, that's a terrible habit. I'm so focused on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not improving myself as a person, mm -hmm. as a human and, and treating people better. It's like, what, what am I doing other than just pointing out this person's shortcomings? Um, so yeah, I think I want to focus more on just giving things without receiving, which is really hard to do 
for women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I think not, I'm not saying that women are, are, we're just constantly expecting things. I mean, some of the guys listening might be going, you nailed it. You nailed it right <laughs> on the head. That's exactly what they're like. I, I think that women rely maybe a little bit too much on men for their comfort in terms of not the traditional things like um, somebody helping with the bills and things like that. I, don't, I think that that's reasonable. I'm talking about their well-being emotionally, you know? I think I figured out that for me, that's something I need to improve, Anne. Because, like, women really want to know when they meet a man what his intentions are. And sometimes the guy doesn't even know. Mm. And the woman is asking the question, you know, we're like, where is this going? What are we going to do? Where are we going to end up? Are you want to marry me? Do we want to have kids? And there's all these big questions. And I think women do that a little bit because we're the ones that has to have the kid. Mm -hmm. It affects our life so much more differently than it does the man. It's Mm -hmm. not that they don't have to be responsible or provide, but they can literally walk away. Mm -hmm. And the woman cannot. She has the child, whether she decides to give it up for adoption or raise it on her own or raise it with that person. Um, that's why that's one of the reasons why I think women want to know mm-hmm. where is this going, you know, and when I think that it's easier for men to disconnect mm. um, from relationships at a certain point. Mm-hmm. I think, um, in the beginning, it's easier for men to walk away. But then as the relationship goes on, I think that it's actually easier for women to walk away. <laughs> I do. Really? Yeah, oh, I do. Huh. I do. I've I've think I've been the primary one to break up with people later. Huh. And if it's a shorter relationship, I think it's probably the guy. Um Yeah, that's a weird. Uh, yeah. I I have no joke for that, but <laughs> <laughs> but it will come. These are all just introspective <laughs> Lisa Alvarado thoughts for like, 2024. These yes. are things like like to just. I think if we just um, didn't expect as much from each other and we we gave a little bit more. This world would be so much better. For sure. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, and it affects it affects my like the fact that I started stand up comedy because I wanted to help other people, because I wanted to heal other people. It also definitely heals me. It definitely um, makes me laugh as well. It makes me happy. I love the interaction with the audience. I love coming up with a new joke Mm. and seeing that response in real time, there's nothing else like it. Mm -hmm. So definitely I am receiving things when I do stand up. But I remember when I first started and wanted to do it, it was because I just wanted to help heal other people, which is why this podcast is called Find the Funny, because (laughs) I want to help people find the funny in their lives, in their tragedies. And what I found out is when I when I focus on the money part, when I focus on just selling a special or making money online or, you know, how much is this gig going to pay me as opposed to doing this other gig or, um, you know, who do I get to take on the road? What kind of accommodations? It's not that I shouldn't worry about those things, that they're fair questions. And sometimes uh, bookers are kind of trying to give you the shaft and um, save money. But all in all, if you had asked me when I was a brand new comedian, hey, would you do a gig for a thousand dollars where you have to be gone a week? I'd be like, yes, yeah, of course. Yes. Where do I sign up? You know, and so now I'm like thousand. What? Are you kidding me? No, I don't even No, I wouldn't, you know, and so 
it's so different now. And I think as you progress, yes, you get better and you should get paid more. But at the same time, where's the love of the craft where you would travel four mm -hmm. hours to do 15 minutes, right. you know? Those are called paying your dues. But at the same time, how much do I really love this? Right. And who knows who I'm going to meet or or help or that's going to help me in some way in life if I didn't go to that gig. You know what I mean? So just trying to be more open to stuff coming in work wise as well. Another one of my New Year's resolutions, which I already told Sarah this, is I need to learn how to edit better like she does all the editing she's fantastic but it's a lot for one person to handle yeah. doing all the editing so i want to learn how to put together these little videos so that you guys can see more of my content on my own and i can do it when i'm on the road i can do it when i'm sitting in an airport so that's one of my goals that's a tangible thing so i think i want to learn how to post and edit a little bit better on my own um, ah, I have a goal of writing at least 30 new minutes this year. Nice. And I wanted to keep it really basic with 30 new minutes that I love because I can definitely write 30 new minutes, um, mm. 30 new minutes that I'm really proud of and that I really love takes a while wow. because you have to like. I mean, I have 30 minutes right now that I'm like, ooh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I don't, oh, I don't want to use that anymore. Oh, I forgot to do that joke again. <laughs> and it's because I have to do like two hours on some gigs that I do. So when I'm doing that amount of time, you're going to put some jokes in there that are not your favorite. But this year, because I'm putting out this special, I'm going to have to retire a lot of material. So you do that slowly in increments. You kind of start to get rid of the stuff you like the least. Mm. And um, you just start writing and filling in the gaps and then writing about new stuff that comes to you. And I'm excited about some of my new material and concepts that I want to work on. But 30 new minutes is the minimum for this year. I think I can exceed that. I'd like to put out a new one hour special every two years. Two That's to three great. years is a very reasonable goal, mm -hmm. but but an hour that I'll be proud of. I feel like some comics that I've seen recently, especially the really um, popular ones, the ones that are really skyrocketing right now, they get all these deals with Netflix or another streaming platform where they're pressured mm -hmm. financially to yeah. put out special after special after special. And then you see their next special and you're like, uh, mm -hmm. well, they only had like nine months to put that together. Right. And, you know, or maybe a year. And that really. For some people who are getting enormous amount of stage time, it's possible for sure. But to crank out a new hour every year is so difficult to make it as good as if not better than the one you just did. Mm hmm. Like there's constantly this, you got to keep the bar high. So I would rather spend six more months or 12 more months and write a killer hour. That's just inside and out. I'm proud of every joke. And that's not as easy to do. <clears throat> and I think one of my last cool. goals is I think I'm ready for a relationship. <laughs> wow okay. i know can you believe it <laughs> yeah I here's know. the bigger shock with a man <laughs> i know <laughs> me are you kidding <laughs> i think i'm funny. ready i think i think and readiness really is just a choice it's mm -hmm. it's not that oh i've evolved i've this i've that i just think mentally i've decided okay like i actually desire it now where I think last year was a lot of taking care of family members, mm. my mom that was ill, um, touring a lot, uh, because my goal last year was to do the special. I did the special it's done. 
I'm going to start working on my next hour. I do have a lot of dates this year in the calendar, a lot of clubs and ships and things that I'm doing this year, which I'm excited about. It's very hard on me to have a relationship when I'm gone all that often. But I think, you know what? I'm going to have faith that I'm going to find the kind of man that's going to be like, cool. Yeah, I want you to succeed. Go do your thing. And guess Mm -hmm. what? I'm not going to cheat on you. You can take my balls (laughs) on the road with you (laughs) in a jar. Because... I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> That's great. I, what's the equivalent? Can I leave my ovaries? It <laughs> doesn't matter. You don't have sex with ovaries, but I don't know. You can't. Can you leave a badge? I don't know. Uh, I was. Yeah. I know. What do you leave? You leave one tit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm an idiot, but. See, the guy that I will fall in love with is going to think that's hilarious and be like, I get it. I understand what she's talking about. So um, I think I'm ready to start trying at that, which means that I will have to get back on online dating because I actually shut yeah. everything down. Did you? Did you shut stuff up? I did. Down, I, I kind of put some on hold. Yeah. Um, But some I just I just killed. Yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, it was just it, I had too much on me emotionally in 2023 to even think that there would be a possibility of a really of meeting someone new, you know, right. and starting something. So I so tell your brothers, <laughs> <laughs> tell your friends, tell people that aren't crazy, that are very good people. Um, hopefully someone with faith, uh, hopefully someone that's taller than five, six. Um, (laughs) no, I, your podcast is your dating app. (laughs) I know you guys, this, this right here, this is my, this is, I'm going to put this on my, my new dating profile. profile. Yeah, exactly. I'm not even, I haven't even, the crazy thing is I haven't even gone back online to start online dating yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Because I have a birthday coming up and I have booked a trip for myself because I'm working um, and I end up in Mexico. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stay a few days and celebrate my birthday on my own. But wouldn't it be nice if I could just have that person that I'm in love with or that I really like to visit while I'm there? I don't know. I think I'm ready to have somebody that besides Sarah, I mean, she's a good kisser, but, (laughs) but we already live together and it's weird, you know, like she's, (laughs) it's me and Sarah to the end. We're probably going to get married. Right or die. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, so yeah. How, how do you guys go about it? I mean, how do you guys go about um, making sure that your resolutions stick. How do you do it? I mean, I would love to know. I mean, right into the show, right into the comments. Yeah. Let me know what is your resolution for 2024? How have you conquered goals in the past and actually attained them? Like, mm-hmm. how, how did you do it? Did you um, take a class? Did you... Did you do small increments? Because I know that that really helps too. Like say you're trying to lose weight. Instead of just saying a blanket statement like, I want to lose weight, you could do, well, I want to lose five pounds in January. And then I want to lose 10 in February. Or like having actual smaller goals to get to the big goal. So like for me, um, in starting a relationship or finding someone that I, I I find fascinating and I want to spend a lot of time with, what does that look like? I guess I have to be really open first, which is, a, <laughs> I think the one of the tough parts for me is being really open and available. Mm. Uh, two, not having uh, crazy expectations, like just mm. kind of going with the flow which is really hard for me because I'm a perfectionist and I'm also OCD. 
mm-hmm. which we all are. So shut up. <laughs> and um, it's true. it is. Yeah, it's just a matter of how OCD you are. We're all OCD and what we focus on. Um, but I like to know the facts so that I can prepare. It's my own mental thing with thinking that the facts are going to help me not to fail. And that's not true. (laughs) So I have to tell myself all the time. I have to remind myself that that doesn't matter. Even if I know all the facts about this person or about dating or what I want and what they want, those things change and life happens. So definitely there will be times where it doesn't matter. Even if I have all the facts, I'm still going to fail. Mm-hmm. And I'm so still going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. So just, I don't have to know everything. I I don't even like saying that out loud. I was just going to say. But... I, I don't like saying that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? that? Exactly. Sarah knows me. She knows that I thrive. Like I feel most comfortable with the facts. Yeah. And an example of that is. Okay. So. Here's a story. This guy um, that I used to date, one of the reasons we broke up for probably several reasons, but um, super nice guy. And I I really like him as a person. One of the things that would really bother me in our relationship is that he wouldn't make plans. Mm. Very spontaneous person. And I think that opposites attract, right? So I like plans. I like to know because I'm really, really busy. Um, We all have crazy lives. We all have commitments. So if I'm traveling a ton, like I need to know what day and what time and where and like everything so that I can plan my day around that, you know? Mm. And I think that that's somewhat reasonable. This person uh, would just say things like, yeah, just let me know when you're done and I'll pick you up or I'll call you or I'll just show up to your house then. Um, no, because that's not a plan. Mm. That's a tiny bit of a plan. (laughs) The sliver of a plan, which is I'll show up. (laughs) Um, what time? Where are we going? Because a woman likes to prepare. I want to know what to wear, if it's dressy, if it's casual. Um, are you staying here? Are we going out? Are you bringing your dog? Are we, you know, like what is yeah. what like so that I can prepare? Right. I don't think men have to prepare as much for a date. I think that they like to maybe wash the car, mm-hmm. you know, shave their balls. <laughs> you know, they somewhat prepare. Some of them like shave their face or their head or like they yeah. prepare in some ways. But women prepare a little differently. So for me. The facts are really important. It makes me help. It helps me to figure out my whole day and prepare for that night, even mentally. Mm. But if I want to find that person. But I think I can ease back on that is what I'm saying. Mm. Like, what's the compromise? I think that's what it is. I have to compromise better. I see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you can't change that person entirely. So what do you do? Okay. If I need a full, complete plan, how about this? How about we meet in the middle? How about you tell me what time and like what genre, (laughs) which means like dressy, totally casual, because then that still leaves. Uh. You can decide what the restaurant or the place is. And I just need to know what to wear, basically, and how late we're going to be out, because that depends, too. Like, I have a dog that needs Mm -hmm. to be taken out and Mm -hmm. fed and Mm -hmm. things like that. And should I eat before and it's just drinks or I I think if I'm more flexible, it gives that person the opportunity to also kind of meet me halfway and come out of their comfort zone and make a plan. <laughs> right. I don't know. I'm talking out loud. This just happened. And so. <laughs> and so you're like, what should and, I do? And in 2023, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I realize that I have to stop and then, saying no, or I'm not going to have a relationship with a man because I'm constantly saying no. So I'm going to start saying yes more often, not to everything and lowering the bar of my expectations and trying to appreciate more. Yeah, because even a little bit of effort is better than no effort, I guess. But guys still need to put in some work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I can't I can't expect that they won't. So, OK, so maybe at some point in 2024, I'll let you guys know, really, if um, if I find a man and I'm into him. I will let you know. So start <laughs> sending some pictures. Yeah. Let me know if you got some available cousins. I I don't want somebody in their 30s. It's got to be <clears throat> 40s. I prefer 40s mm. and above. But like 40 to 42. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They need to be a little, you know, just definitely not 75. Like I don't want to bite in. But I want, <laughs> I want someone that's going to die in two days. But I do not want them to be too young either because I just uh, I don't think right. I'll relate as well. Right. Okay. No 20 year olds. Yeah. No 20 year olds. No scrubs either. <laughs> just like the song says. Uh, <laughs> so that's my goals, you guys. Uh, I'm going to focus on giving Try to not have too many expectations on people. Um, I want to sell the special and the documentary. If not, we're going to put them out this year anyway. And we'll tell you when that happens. I'm going to learn to edit and post my own videos. That's another goal. I'm going to write 30 new minutes of killer material. And then I'm going to be back with a boyfriend. If not, I'm going to marry Sarah. <laughs> Probably that's the direction I'm going to go. So um, oh what kind of gosh. ring do you like? I know. You know, so, I know. You're so excited. What's your 2024 goal? <laughs> to not be gay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. That's me. Bye. I just wanted to say happy 2024, you guys. I hope it's fantastic for you. I hope God blesses you your career, your family, your health this year. And um, tell a friend about my podcast or yes. come see me live. I would really love that. If we could meet in person, wouldn't that be amazing? But until then, please subscribe um, so I can give you all the news that's happening in my career and we can touch base. But let me know what your goals are and how you think I can best achieve mine. Is there any books that you've read or like classes that you've taken that have helped you conquer and achieve some of the goals that you've had? Like, wh what do you think I should do? Um, I, that would be really helpful. I would love to hear from you. So put it in the comments and I will get back. I, will, I try to respond to every single comment except for the asshole ones. I will delete you. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't be a jerk. Say. Be nice. We're going to be nice to each other in 2024. That's okay? right. Yeah. We're going to be good I people. Like it. Yeah. No matter who the president is, we're going to treat each other well. Right. That's the most important thing. Okay. I love I you like guys. It. Happy 2024. And I will see you in two weeks. It's going to be my birthday episode. <gasps> two oh weeks. I know. Let's That's get so Lisa great. laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just combine all what those. i know I'll, i should be, i'm gonna add that to one. my goal list oh my gosh lisa's getting laid at 24 <laughs> sarah it might be you all right i love you guys thank you so much for tuning in to find the funny with lisa alvarado i hope everybody listen to my daughter and see it and laughing with her because she is very funny Ha, ha, ha.